Thank you very much for the nice introduction. Um, indeed, my name is uh, Harry Van Gore. And as you know, uh, Gore is, uh, is Dutch for dirty. And uh, they call me Dirty Harry uh, most of the time, my family. And um, as you probably will know, I'm not an architect. And actually, in Denglish, I heard a colleague kind of conicologist saying, I'm a strange duck in the bite. And this is for uh, the translation. This is, I actually don't belong on this stage because I don't know anything about architecture. And the people that um, um, invited me think I'm an expert. Well, they probably think that I'm an expert because I'm uh, a doctor. I have DR, but also have a professor. And, well, they think that I'm an expert. But I myself consider myself as a constructive troublemaker more like an activist, or you could say a hooligan, but then a, maybe, uh, hopefully, a benign hooligan. But I have some relationship with architecture, because 10 years ago, my wife and I bought a house, and that appeared to be a Usonian-style house designed by Frank Lloyd Wright, an American architect. Before that, I didn't know this guy. And, but now, uh, we are somewhat addicted to uh, Frank Lloyd Wright. As a matter of fact, we just came back from a Midwest tour, and we toured about 40 houses of Frank Lloyd Wright. Most of them we only could see from the outside, and um, my wife in particular is taking pictures, pictures like Japanese uh, woman, uh, to see afterwards where we have been. And um, uh, I draw your attention on this uh, two uh, chairs, because in one of the houses we saw last uh, week, on the terrace, so we thought, okay, we are in a good direction. Why do I show this? Because um, Frank Lloyd Wright is, let's, was an innovator as an architect. And I think really his ideas at that time still apply for this time. I give you some quotes um, which you can, as builders and architects, can uh, take into account. Form and function should be one. And then he says, joint in the spiritual union, I mean, I'm basically professor of the Radboud University, so I have to uh, take that quote also, a spiritual union. But also strive continuously of continuity to simplify. And don't forget that it's not only about comfort and utility, but it's also about beauty. Don't forget to put beauty in the buildings. And then, which I think is much provocative, that an architect must be a prophet. And he says, if you can't predict or foresee at least 10 years ahead, don't call yourself an architect. So I push you, put the pressure on you like architects and builders. And then hopefully, for me, this is good, this quote, I can bury my mistakes. I can say anything here on the stage because I can bury my mistakes and architects can only advise clients to cover it uh, all up. So this presentation, I'm going to do a little bit like the right way. This guy was very provocative. He was challenging old ideas. And one of the, well, I wouldn't say old ideas, but recent ideas that come into your heads as architects and builders, that there is something like a hospital without a bed. This is totally nonsense. And this is also always in the title. You see it a lot on the internet. Actually, I like this entrance. I like this lounge coming in, very spacious. And I've seen more recent um, examples, also in our hospital, that even after rebuilding, it's not that spacious uh, like here. But when you look at the subtitle, it says, this is about ambulatory outpatient clinic. Outpatient clinic. So it has nothing to do with an inpatient clinic, this is an outpatient clinic, ambulatory. And when you look in this clinic, uh, uh, at there are no beds, look at this no bed. You could call this a chair bed or a bed chair, but anyway, when you see here, this is not a very modern thing. There are curtains there, and even you can see that the patient in this fertility is a number. So, uh, uh, I think when you uh, talk about uh, this type of ambulatory outpatient facility, you have a small operation, for example, 
then this is a much more fancier uh, environment. Another quote by Rick, Ricky Valencia, I call him Ricky Valencia, I don't know the guy, but this is like a name for me, like a DJ, but he's, uh, he's saying the hospital of the future won't have beds. Come on. If you read on, it says it's for chronic care. It's for patients with diabetes, hypertension, it's for uh, COPD. And if you are reading this, you would say, okay, this is nothing, has nothing about the hospital. In future, I call this home. These patients will stay at home and will be treated there. So this has nothing to do with hospitals. The hospital of the future is what I foresee is the two ICU. It's intensive care or high care units with sick patients caring for, and it is uh, a department of interventional cure unit. And the interventional cure unit can be either operations or interventions by other specialists like radiologists and gastroenterologists. And I have a nice uh, uh, video of that because we think, I, and I think I'm very modern, but almost 20, 30 years ago, this was, um, can you play it? Almost uh, uh, 20 years ago, uh, this was already uh, an idea of this hospital. Can you lower the light a bit? hospitals where you get the patients lying around in bed, <laughs> sleeping, resting, recuperating, convalescing. Well, that's not the way we do things here, right? <laughs> okay, so 20 years ago, this was the uh, modern double ICU, and patients were discharged from the ICU uh, to the outside. I brought you a scheme. And this scheme is, in my mind, if you know this scheme and you can interpret it, this is medicine. So what happens? Uh, as we here now, we are independent. We can take care of ourselves. We function. But then some things happen. You get ill, you have a disease, or you had an operation. And then temporarily, you will be dependent. Dependent of other people. Dependent on facilities. And then there are different uh, patterns. You can either recover quite quickly and again the same level of functioning, but also it might be that you will stay in, uh, dependent for a long time or even functioning anymore, which you could call uh, death. And in this period, the bed, the hospital bed, plays a role. And I put this like in this picture, that the bed about here, patients are lying around in bed. And I show you three pictures of patients. And you should take a guess which picture doesn't belong in this row. So this is a picture. Then this picture. And then this picture. So, who wants to take a guess? Is it A, B, or C? A, B, and C? Okay, I thought it was easy, but it's not that easy. Or maybe the example is not very good. Well, say it again. On the left side, this is a patient who is dependent on special functions. Vitals are uh, checked by nurses. And as you can see, this patient is on oxygen, has oxygen uh, telemetry, is sitting in bed, has a line, so she looks like quite ill. And I think she is not totally dependent. And then you see this patient, which has dementia, and is, well, actually, you see, this is very good in this uh, picture because this bed is against the wall. I would say this is very clever. So the bed is not in the center, the bed is against the wall. So this patient has only one chance to fall out of bed, which is on one side. And if you put the bed in the center, it's at least at three sides that you can fall out. 
And then you see this patient. What is, doing, what is this patient doing in bed? And why does he have so much space around his bed? This should be a small sleeping room without a chat, etc. And be out of bed and should be surrounded by other people, have social contacts. And this is a picture I took a couple of weeks ago, which is a first uh, trial in an academic hospital of patients. So my message is, no room size fits all periods of a patient being in the hospital. No function, vitals, or no vitals, functions, all rooms, and no room fits all. No room fits all. The view of one room in a hospital is with no view. But now I go back to the scheme, which is medicine, explains everything. And I challenge you, because when you look at this and you... Blue, 40 degrees, shivering, what do you do, particularly men? They go lie in bed. And they ask their spouses, can you bring me a cup of tea? You know? So they are dependent. They are lying in bed. And then after one day, they are a little bit better. And then they go out. Uh, another room where they socialize with other people and they are uh, better again. But what we want is to do it even better. We want to have all patients have a quicker recovery and have a better functioning going out of the hospital, or being out of the hospital. Because that's the essential of health, of functioning. That you have a problem, you're taking care of this problem, and then you will be better. Not at the same, you will be better. And it, it should be quicker, to be better and quicker. And that cannot be done with all the old-fashioned tricks, like nurses that are taking patients out of bed more, and we tried a lot of things enhanced recovery programs, etc. But we didn't make a revolution with that. And for a revolution, we need what we call smart rooms. But there's not so much, not something like one smart room. Because if you look at this room, and I ask you, what do you think about this room? What do you think about this room? It's a chaos. Doesn't make sense. And it might be that you or even irritated by this color. And irritation means stress, and stress is bad for your recovery. So what we also need to do is to develop smart rooms, but personalize it. We need to personalize the smart rooms. But you can't do it like in an opera, where you have three uh, parts, and then you exchange with all uh, uh, types of hardware, you exchange the whole, uh, let's say, healing, healing environment. So we need to do that with cheap, simple, and smart technology. And that's where our project a room with a view. And we have a very nice dream team. And because to make a start, we have to focus on particular things, because we can't do anything uh, at once. So we focused from the medical side on sleep, stress, pain, and mobilization. Because these are four key elements for recovery. And as a matter of fact, by surprise, I met Iris, and Iris said, hey, in the design world, th this is also scientifically proven that when we create a healing environment in the design world or in, 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 in uh, architecture, then we can also improve sleep, decrease stress, decrease pain, and increase mobilization. So we found each other and talked a lot about how we would, could personalize a room. And our dream is to do it within one hour, personalize a room, based on characteristics of the patients. 
because some of uh, the patients have other experience when they are in a hospital room than other patients. And I'll give you two examples. It's only just a start. But I hope that you will see through it and see, okay, what the potential is of all these um, uh, smart and simple technology. This is a virtual reality. Th actually, this is designed by, at that time, a student. He's now a medical doctor. And he did it within a week. And what he did is he made uh, a virtual reality movie. But this is a passive movie. So you're looking around and you, you see you're, you're on, a, on a lake, on a river, and you're looking around, see nice trees, etc. A little bit. Uh, nice music about it. And then he said, okay, I make it not a passive, but an active movement. You have to do something. And uh, with this, it's totally the same, but now you have to hit with your head, like a ball, all these, um, these targets. And then you see a number, how many of the targets you've hit. And in the meantime, we put electric, electric pulses, painful pulses on the arm, and then we measured if the, uh, the healthy volunteer would say, uh, this is painful, yes or no. Many of these healthy volunteers, the active virtual reality, so by hitting the walls, the, the threshold, so the threshold was much higher, so it took longer before the participants would say, I feel it painful. This could be powerful, because we know that we don't have any better pain medication left, uh, uh, and there will be no pain me better me pain medication in the next five to ten years. Pharma has no options. So we need to think about other options, and this might be an op option. Is it personalized? Yes, because women do worse than men. On the contrary, that a lot of people think that women has a lower threshold for pain than, uh, than men. Personalized, but there's a gender difference. Example, um, this is an augmented reality. And it was just, so this was created. What I'm, I see through these uh, augmented reality uh, glasses, I see you, but I, in the interface in the middle, I see this vertebra. And um, one of the, um, uh, uh, the members of the Dream Team, he made a mobilization augmented reality. This was a mobilization for patients with um, uh, arthritis. And uh, what he did is, um, this is a sort of a game where you have to put this in, uh, in this flower. And by doing this, all these movements, it helps with uh, mobilizing your, um, your joints, which you can easily convert to mobilizing in bed with your legs, cycling, etc., with augmented reality, without having to have a bicycle in your bed. Okay, those are two examples. This might be future. But like I said, we were in the U.S. This was a nice hotel in Chicago. And I looked in the mirror, and my wife pushed the button, and there was a te television in the mirror. It's already there. It's in the hotel. And I thought, this is very powerful, because like dancers, ballet dancers, exercising, I will not show it, but uh, exercising in the mirror to check how good they are doing, this could be powerful for uh, patients also, that they could check their movements in a mirror and have the instruction program in their uh, television. Or even there can be a nurse who is uh, take care and say, okay, you're not doing quite well, you, d you should do better. So, like I said, we made this... All people in the Dream Team. People with uh, backgrounds I didn't even know. I mean, surrounding psychologists. I haven't... I haven't heard of that, the surrounding psychology. We have a dream team from Delft. We have the product designers. We have industrial designers. And also a little bit of uh, uh, doctors and biomedical uh, people, technical uh, medicine. So there's a group of 10 to 15 people that will, in the next two years, will be busy with this project room with a view. And I hope I can challenge you a little bit to 
come in contact with us and we will f ask you and visit you and, and stalk you uh, to get ideas, to exchange ideas, because we think that it, um, it shouldn't be that difficult that we can have a future room, a patient room, where, which is very flexible and can be personalized so there will be a really a healing environment and that the patient will uh, recover much more quickly and much more better. Thank you very much for your attention.